What's up guys, back again this month. The March numbers have just come out for the UK housing market. So I'm back again. It seemed like the February review was popular. So we're doing a review of the UK housing market for the month of March. So the headline figures are, UK house price has continued to grow. If you remember from my last video, the house price growth for February was 4.1% and it's continued at 4% for this month. Demand has shot up. Last month it was 13% and we're at 27.5%. And we're gonna go into the reasons behind that as we go along, but these are just the headline figures. 27.5%, that's huge. Supply last month was minus 13% and it's reduced slightly. It's still at a minus to minus 6.1%. So that's basically telling us that less and less houses are on the market. So those are the headline figures, guys, for March. So let's get into some of the detail in the exec summary. So we know that buyer demand has hit new highs, okay? And why has buyer demand hit new highs for this month? The key reason, guys, is that last month we saw the budget announced by Richie Sunak. And within that budget, he announced an extension of the stamp duty holiday till September. So if you recall, the stamp duty holiday was initially earmarked to end in March. But what Rishi Sunak did was that he extended it to September. And if you don't know, there was a bottleneck of transactions in the UK due to the fact that everybody saw this stamp duty holiday as a good thing. If I complete on a house now, I can save a ton of money in stamp duty taxes. So essentially what we saw was solicitors, housing agents, just overwhelmed with volumes. There was a backlog, guys. And I think part of Rishi Sunak's decision-making was to allow those to go through and also to allow some other people to get through the door and also it was a good coup for the conservative government you extend this scheme and a lot of people are going to be happy for you when it comes to re-election so if you're buying a house good news for you so that has driven the rise in demand that's one of the reasons we also saw the introduction of the 95 percent mortgage guarantee scheme so in the uk from April this month. First time buyers and existing homeowners can get access to 5% deposit mortgage products out there on the market. And these are backed by the government who are backing these mortgages up to the tune of 95%. And the great thing about these products, as I mentioned, you don't have to just be a first time buyers and they're not just restricted to new build properties. So big product that's come and it's opened up the market to a lot of people. So I believe this is part of the reason why demand has jumped considerably between last month and this month. You can also see in this Zoopla report that they've said that the combination of children returning to school and the stamp duty extension that we've already um, mentioned. But with regard to the children returning to school, perhaps um, if we look into this a bit deeper and we think about it, let me know what you think in the comments below. But I guess with parents having their children go back to school, they're no longer homeschooling. So if they were looking at buying a house, they now have more time to get out to do viewings. And as lockdown has eased in general across the UK, more viewings can be done, no more virtual viewings, or you can still do virtual viewings, but you can get out and see a house. No one's really, well, most people don't wanna buy a house virtually. So I believe that's also one of the reasons behind the demand surging as lockdown has eased as well. And related to high demand, in The Guardian, what we're seeing is in this article is that prices are at an all-time high, which to be honest, guys, isn't all that surprising. We know that long-term, the property market is essentially an upward curve. It rises over the long term. So the fact that we're seeing the highest prices on record now isn't surprising to me. Um, a lot of people thought that perhaps we would have seen a dip in the market due to COVID. However, when you consider that even before the announcement of the budget, the stamp duty holiday scheme was already in place. So there was a lot of demand for property anyway. There were a lot of transactions going through during COVID, guys. And in addition to that, during COVID, some 500,000 people left London alone because they were searching for space. You know, during the pandemic, people didn't want to be around other people in a cramped, high density city. So people actually bought properties or moved outside of London. So um, prices were in fact rising during COVID as well. And now that almost the breaks and the leashes have been taken off, um, it's unsurprising that prices are going up 
further. So in this article from The Guardian, taken from, I think it's Right Moves data, they're talking about the government to unveil the 95% mortgage guarantee scheme, which we've already covered and that we know about. Talking about a frenzy of activity has driven UK prices to record highs this month, um, just as they launched the mortgage guarantee scheme. So yeah, we just talked about that. No surprises there. And what we're gonna, we're gonna look at supply in a second, guys, but also when you basically couple incredibly high demand with a shortage of supply, what you're gonna get is prices being forced upwards. So it's almost perfect conditions for prices to be forced upwards. And that's why we're seeing record numbers for this month, guys. It's a good time to be a seller. Oh, and interestingly here, we can see that from Monday, several banks and building societies will start to be offering the 5% deposit product for mortgages. So um, those products should be coming onto the market soon. Um, and some big banks are Lloyd, Santander, Barclays, HSBC, and NatWest. So if you're looking to buy a house, guys, right now, um, be on the lookout for, for products with these banks because, you know, it's a great scheme. 5% deposit. If you can't normally afford a deposit um, in the UK, depending on where you live, especially in London, but lots of other cities too, this could be a good product to take a look at, guys. And then lastly, guys, one more article. I love the Office for National Statistics. Um, I am a statistic nerd. Um, they have released some data for February. So not necessarily March, but February. But what they've said is that in the year, not the month, because we're looking at the month here from February to March, but they're talking about the year from February 2020 to February 2021, prices increased by 8.6%. And we just talked about that, guys. We said during that whole year, during COVID, there are a lot of factors that led to prices being pushed up. 8.6%, guys. That is that that is big <laughs> during a global pandemic. I mean, that is crazy. Um, yeah, wow. Um, so yeah, the stats don't lie. The stats don't lie. 8.6%. And then coming back to uh, the, the Zoopla report, just in terms of where these increases from February to March are taking place, same suspects, same usual suspects as last uh, last month, guys. And you know these aren't going to change much because, as we saw in the last video, a lot is going on, particularly in Manchester and Liverpool. I own in Liverpool. I also own in Sheffield, um, Manchester and Liverpool in particular. A lot of overseas money coming into those cities from the Middle East, from China. A lot of overseas investment in property and UK itself as well. And that's because. The cities themselves are investing a lot in their infrastructure. So we're talking about ports, we're talking about new train stations, we're talking about offices, we're talking about large scale residential developments. A lot is going on in these cities and that naturally attracts investment. It attracts new people into the city and in turn house prices grow, go up. So if you are looking for a property, uh, it's always a good idea to have a look at what's going on from a regeneration and development perspective because you want to kind of ride that wave. As we see, a lot of the north, north, northwest cities, Manchester, Liverpool, Nottingham, Leicester, Sheffield, Leeds, and Yorkshire representing, Cardiff is in the mix. And then as you come down south, and this map is actually pretty helpful, you can see, you know, around this region, northwest, there it is. They got it by region. So again, the average for the northwest is 5.2. Northeast for Yorkshire, as we saw, Leeds 5.3. And then as you come down south, you can see that those numbers decrease. So east of England, 3.4. London, 2%. Southeast, 3.4%. 3.8%. So there's a clear divide, basically, as you go from southeast, I'd say, towards northwest. So now let's take a look at supply. So within the UK, we know, generally speaking, that there is an undersupply of houses. And this is becoming clearly plain to us through this data. It's confirming what we already know, guys. So when we read through this report, see that the number of sales of homes being listed has not kept pace with demand. So demand is outstripping supply, which, as we saw earlier, causes a spike in prices. And wow, guys, the number of homes for sale was nearly 30% lower than average during the same period in 2017 to 2019. And when you look at the types of houses that are suffering from shortages in supply, there's actually no shortage in supply of one and two bed flats. And my theory is um, the help to build scheme. You might know it as the help to buy scheme, but it's really the help to build scheme because it benefits 
housing builders, big development companies like, you know, your Barrett Homes, etc. And with the Help to Buy scheme, essentially what it what it ensures for developers is that if when they build their houses and these houses are normally developments, flats, one, two bed flats in large blocks, um, it ensures that they are going to sell those flats because the government are essentially guaranteeing the mortgages for the buyers. So it really does help. Um, developers to build and sell one, two, and sometimes three bed flats. So it's no coincidence that you can see the actual supply of these going up. Um, where there is a shortage in supply is actually two, three, and four bed houses. So you can see these are actually going down. And note that these are houses, these are not flats. And you know, again, developers aren't really building houses, they're building flats. So there is an undersupply in the UK right now of houses. So if you are looking, again, to buy a property, an investment property, you might want to look at two free bed houses because if there's a general shortage in supply in the UK, it's going to be good for you when it comes to buying one of those houses and putting it out on the market for rent because people are going to snap them up, possibly, in theory, a lot quicker than one in two bed flats based on the undersupply. So what could be some of the reasons driving this shortage in supply of particularly two, three, four bed family houses? Again, I have a few theories, but if you're in a house or two, three, four bed, you're likely to have a family and you might be less willing to have opened your house to viewings um, during the pandemic if you have a family if you have children to think about versus if you're in a one or two bed flat and you're on your own not saying that people in one and two bed flats don't value <laughs> their own safety and health but if you have a family I guess you've got more to think about so there it's possible that we might have seen less family homes on the market during uh, COVID and we can see this also in this Guardian article uh, many sellers have held fire and putting their houses on the market until they've had their second vaccination so it specifically says houses which kind of um, links up to what we were just saying about homeowners with families um, probably wanting to take less risks when it comes to selling their house um, but I guess the silver lining is that once the vaccine rollout gets into its later stages you'd expect to see more two three four bed houses hit the market people feel a lot more confident they feel a lot more safe and they're more willing to open up their homes for viewings and more houses go into the market that's my theory guys that's what these articles says but what are your thoughts on that let me know in the comment section below I'll be interested to hear what you guys think about that so what does that mean overall guys in summary so we have huge demand um, record levels of demand record prices and low supply um, I do think that these combined will mean that prices are probably inflated. So if you're buying a house right now, because there is a lot of demand and there is not a lot of supply, um, you're going to see prices that are probably higher than they should be. So if you're a seller, that's that's absolutely good for you. You know, I'd absolutely encourage you to get the highest price possible that you can for your property, you know, without being exorbitant and you know taking advantage of buyers but it's good for you it's a seller's market if you're a buyer you might want to negotiate i say negotiate all the time you know all seasons all times every single month of the year if you're buying a house negotiate 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 but particularly now because you know that prices are higher than they should be potentially so you want to be negotiating the price down yes um, because of the market, it might mean that there are three or four other people willing to take your place. But an extra 10, 20, even 30k on a house just because the market is hot is a lot to pay. Okay, so you might want to negotiate or wait until the price is normalized to a much more reasonable level. Um, that's it, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you did find it helpful, please do drop a like. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I will see you for next month's update.